everyone. Welcome to Amy Slime Reading Club and Yum Yum Cookie and Black Worm. Today, I'm going to read you a story. An African tale retold and illustrated by Gull 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 E. Holy. Okay, that's a new jewel name. Let's get started. Many African stories, whether or not they were about Kaubaku and Nice, the Spider Man recall spider stories. This book is about how that came to be. Spider stories tell how small defenseless men or animals outwit others and succeed against great odds. These stories are crossed the Atlantic Ocean in the cruel ships that deliver slaves to the Americans. Their descendants still tell some of those stories today. Anans has become a Nazi in the Caribbean Islands. While he survives as anti Nazi in the southern United States, you will find many African words in this story. If you listen carefully, you can tell what they mean by their sounds. At time, words that pair races are repeated at several times. African repeat words to make them stronger. For example, so small, so small, so small means very, very, very small. The African storyteller begins. We do not really mean, we do not really mean that what you are about to say is true. A story, a story, let it come, let it go. Once, so oh, small children around my knee, there were no stories on earth to hear. All the stories belong to Niall, the star god. He keeps them in a gold box next to his rolls to... Anans, the Spider-Man, wanted to buy the Sky God story, so he spun the web up to the sky. When the Sky God heard what the Nats wanted, he laughed. Tweet, tweet, tweet. The price of my story is that you bring me a spoo, the leopard of the terrible teeth, a Boro, the hornet, who stings like fire, and Moatia, the fairy woman. Man, never see. Anna's bowed and answered, I shall gladly pay the price. Tweet, 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 chuckled the sky cock. How can a weak man, old, how can a weak old man like you, so small, so small, so small, pay my price? But Anna's mercifully, merrily, merrily, climbed down to earth to find the things the sky god demanded. Anna's ran along the jungle path. Yardy, um, um, Yardy, 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 till he came to Oops, Ospo, the leopard of the terrible teeth. Oh ho, Anans, said the leopard, you are just in time to be my lunch. Anans replied, as for that, what will, ha will, hap what will happen will happen, but first, let us play the behinding, be the binding, binding game. The leopard, who was fond of games, asked, How is it played? With vine creepers, explained Anas. I will blind you by your foot and foot. Then I will untie you, and you can tie me up. Very well, growled the leopard, who planned to eat Anas as soon as it was his turn to bind him. So Anans tied the leopard by his foot, by his foot, by his foot, by his foot with a vine creeper. Then he said, Now, Obso, you are all ready to meet the sky god. And he hung the tide the leopard in a tree in the jungle. Next, Anas cut a frond from a banana tree and filled the calabash with water. He creeped through the tall grasses, Sora, 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 till he came to the nest of Mboro, the horn is twisting like fire. Anans held a banana leaf over his hat as an umbrella. Then he poured some of the water in the calabash over his hat. 
The rusty am tied over the honey's nest and cried, It is raining, 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 should we not fly into my calabash, so that the rain will not tatter your wings? Thank you, thank you, hummed the hornets, and they flew into the calabash form. And as quickly stopped them out of the ground gourd. Now, Mbora, you are ready to meet the sky god, said Anas. And he hung the calabash full of hornets onto the tree next to the leopard. Anas now curved a little wooden door holding a bow. He, cur uh, he covered the door from top to bottom with sticky lactic gum. Then he filled the door bowl with pounded yams. He set the little doll at the foot of the foot of a flamboyant tree where fairies like to dance, and as tied one end of a vine round the doll's head hat and hold thing the other end in his pant, he hid behind a brush. In a little while, Moatia, the fairy warm no man sees came dancing, dancing, dancing to the foot of the flam flamboyant tree. There she saw the doll holding the bowl of yams. Moatia said, Come baby, I am hungry. May I eat some of your yams? And then pulled at the vine in his hiding place so that the doll seemed to nod his head. So the fairy took the bowl from the door and ate all the yams. Thank you, gum baby, said the fairy. But the doll did not answer. Don't you reply when I thank you, cried the angered fairy. The doll did not stir. Come, baby, I'll slap your crying place unless you answer me, shouted the fairy. But the wooden doll remained still and silent. So the fairy stepped her crying place, paw, her hand stuck fast to the gum baby's sticky cheek. Let go of my hand or I'll slap you again, paw. She slapped the doll's crying place with her other hand. Now the fairy was stuck to the gun baby with both hands, and she was furious. She pushed against the doll with her feet, and they also stuck fast. Now a nun came out of hiding. You're ready to meet the sky god, Moatia. And he carried her to the tree where the leopard and the hornet were waiting. Anas spun a web round Ospo, Umbro, and Watia. Then he spun a web to the sky. He pulled up his captives behind him and set them down at the feet of the god, sky god. Oh, no, said the nun, spoiling low. There is the price you ask for your stories. Ospo, the leopard of the terrible teeth, Umbro, Ro, the hornets who sting like a fire, said and what yeah a fairy woman never see name the sky sky uh, name the sky god called together all the nobles of his court and addressed them in a loud voice little annons the spider-man has paid me the price i ask for my stories sing his praise i command you from this day and going on forever proclaimed the sky god my stories belong to Annas and shall be called spider stories. E e e! Shouted all the assembled nobles. So Annas took the golden box of stories back to the earth, to the people of his village. And when he opened the box, all the stories tackered to the corner of the world, including this one. This is my story, which I have related. If it be sweet, or if it be not sweet, take some elsewhere and let some come back to me. Wow, it's a story. Yeah. And do subscribe my channel and don't forget to like my channel too. Bye. And um, I'm very sorry for reading so quietly. My throat very hurts. So... Bye, see you again.